Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun With Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Skimi 1816 Digital Analog Watch. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing an Addy's Dive MY-H6 1000 meter diver watch. And Grovo, since I'm wearing a 1000 meter watch, is wearing my 500 meter Phoebus Leviathan. Grogu said Mando asked the Ugnaughts to fix Grogu's broken IG-12 mech suit, but Mando asked if they could add a third speech button that handles both yes and no. Mando said that way he could be maybe Yoda. Okay, here's the watch. Did not come in a box. Gamis never do. At least I've never had one that does. They usually just come with a little hang tag. Oops, upside down. little hang tag and the instructions. But I was able to figure out how to set this without using the instructions. But here it is. Actually, one of my viewers asked me to review this one. So that's uh, the main reason I got this one. The digital analog watch is a very popular choice and it can offer the best of both worlds. A lot of the very affordable AliExpress watches accomplish this by having two movements in a watch. One handles the digital and another handles the analog. You have pushers to set the digital and a crown to set the analog and in no way does one movement know what the other is doing. So when I purchased this me, one of the first questions I was asked is how do you set the analog when there is no crown? I didn't really know so I went ahead and set the digital time and was quite shocked to see the analog hands move and match the digital side on its own. This watch doesn't have two movements. It has one movement and it is synchronized. I was quite shocked since it only cost me $22. This watch comes in five different colorways including steel, gold, rose gold, black, and black with green dial. You also have an option of a negative digital display. I chose the silver with traditional LCD. The watch is 41.2 millimeters at the flats of the bezel, 43 millimeters corner to corner, has a 49.9 millimeters lug to lug and it has a integrated bracelet but at least uh, at least they actually flex here a lot of them don't 13.4 millimeters thick so it's a little chunky and the lug width does not apply but it's 26 millimeters at the widest link and weighs 135 grams on the supply bracelet with three links removed so yeah you heard that three links so you should be able to wear this if you have a nice big wrist we have an octagon shaped bezel, which gives it the look of a Casio oak, which of course is called that because of the octagon bezel of the royal oak. And it's got that coarse brushing that you usually see in bezels like this. Then the dial, we have Skimi up top. Water resistance, you only get 30. And then these indices here are not loomed but the hands are and then we have a date day of the week indicator here on the left and then we have the digital display here on the bottom right hit the top left pusher and it tells you what time zone you are i'm in the chicago time zone this is a world traveler watch so it does it by airport code then if you hit this button here, it switches it to world time, to UTC. The second time can only be UTC time, so you can't set it to be a different time zone. You, you only have the, the time zone of the watch in UTC time. And so it's technically not, it's a dual time, but one time is GMT only. Then hit it again and you get the stopwatch. And hit it again, you get a timer. Hit it again, you get an alarm. So you get a lot of features for a $22 watch. Then it gets you back to time. To set the watch, just hold down the top pusher. And the first thing you set is the time zone. So let's say I want to set the LA. So I got it set to LA. Hit the button again, and look at that. The hands move to two hours earlier on their own. So that's really cool. 
You usually don't see that on a $22 watch. So pretty impressed with that. Then of course though you see it only moves in the forward direction. So it's gonna since I'm going two hours backwards, it's making a it's making a, almost a complete lap to do that. But I mean how often do you do that? So it will get there eventually. So let's just stop it for now until it catches up. After setting the time zone. You can also set whether or not daylight savings is on or off. Right now it's set to on because we're during daylight savings. Then you can set whether or not it's 12 hour or 24 hour digital display. And then you have your seconds, hours and minutes. Then you have the year. Then you have the month and the date. And so this should handle leap years. And this uh, lets you know Turn on the beep and the light. All right, we have a mineral glass crystal. It's flat, nothing special about it, does the job. And then the case is a chrome plated alloy. It's nice, I mean, yeah, you're not gonna get solid steel at this price, but I've definitely seen a lot worse. Then the watch is kind of thick though, because the, the movement takes up a lot of room. I'll show you that later. Then we have the case back. And it says, it's gonna be 1816 water resistant. And it gives you the battery code. And of course the water resistance is only three ATM, which is the bare minimum. Then underneath the case back is the movement. I went ahead and popped the case back because I wanted to see if uh, there was any writing on the movement so I could tell you because I was so impressed with it. And surprise, surprise, surprise. I had a little accident. This is the second watch I've gotten. The first watch, I took the case back off and here's the movement. Because unfortunately, when I pulled the case back and was looking at the movement, the hands fell off. So here, let me show you the other watch. As you can see, the it's pretty deep here. So this, uh, this dial here is kind of, can get stuck. And so changing the, the battery is going to be a real pain on this watch because you have to be really careful or you'll lose your hands like I did. So I wasn't aware of that. Fortunately, you had me do this review, so you will be aware of that. So if I was you, I would take this watch to a watch pro to get the battery changed. I'm not talking about the kiosk in the mall. I'm talking about a real watch guy. Now, of course, I could have a real watch guy fix this, but then that would cost more than the watch. So why would I do that? That's why I ordered a new one because I still wanted to be able to do the review. Just once again, beware. And also, it's similar to a G-Shock in where once you change the battery, you have to take a pair of tweezers and press the AC, then touch it with another part of the watch. So... That's something too, if you have difficulty with that. I'm assuming the AC is in this little slot here. It, it's not marked AC, but it looks very similar to the G-Shock AC. So I'm hoping so, because otherwise you'd have to take a little tiny screwdriver and take this plastic shield off, which I didn't want to do. So I didn't do that to see if I could get a reference number for this movement. Then the bracelet, we have hollow links, but they're pretty sturdy hollow links. I mean, some not all hollow links are created equal. Some of them are really, really thin, and you can really tell they're hollow. This one's got some girth and strength to it, but there is quite a bit of 
wobble. But for a $22 watch, I, I like this bracelet. It's sure a lot better than a rolled bracelet, that's for sure. And the clasp, though, is a just simple pressed and no micro adjust. And this is a 135 gram watch. It's got some weight to it. So you want the perfect fit. So it's kind of a shame there's no micro adjust. So you might want to order a clasp from AliExpress. Let me find my calipers and I'll tell you how big to get. All right, let's see how big it is. 20 millimeters. So you'll need a 20 millimeter clasp for this watch. And I highly suggest that if, because this clasp is so plain. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. As you can see, I got a good fit. So, but your mileage may vary. But it's a nice looking watch. And like I said, it's got some heft to it, but it's not too heavy. And it looks nice. And once again, it's a digital analog that's synchronized. Here we are in the loom room. Since this is a digital analog, there's a backlight. So you really don't need loom, but since it has loom, let's test it. As I speed up the time, the loom fades almost immediately. This is very bad loom. I mean, why even bother? But this one has a backlight that actually shines onto the dial. Unfortunately, it shines so bright it makes reading the digital difficult. What do I like about this watch? Well, a fully featured synchronized movement. And I do like this bracelet, even though it is a hollow link. It's a very well-built hollow link bracelet. And it's a nice looking watch. And it's comfortable. What are my grapes and groans? The hand loom is practically non-existent. Only 30 meters of water resistant. No micro adjust, even though it is a fairly heavy watch. And the backlight shines on the analog, making it difficult to read the digital display using the backlight. And the biggest gripe of them all is the hands fell off when I tried to look at the movement. I've never ever had that happen to me before. Do I recommend this watch? Sure, a synchronized digital analog watch for $22 is quite a bargain. Dual time, world time, and all the bells and whistles. Just keep in mind when the battery dies that you might want to be very careful trying to change it yourself and might want to take it to a real watch person. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Skimi 1816, and I will be back with another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.